What makes for a good book? I'll start with a definition. A book is a structure for storing and sharing information. So it has two purposes. The first one is it records the information, but the second thing is equally important is that it makes it available so future readers can do it as well. We're so used to seeing a rectangular book that's bound on one edge with lots of pages in it. And that's been around for a long time. But we have to keep in mind that books were not always that way. Almost everything we know about books today goes back to like 3000 BC when um, with cuneiform tablets. I mean, that's when they had books. That's where our first literature came from, uh, cataloging uh, the table of contents. So they, they all date back to these little clay tablets. And then, of course, there were scrolls. And, of course, the word volume means roll. So uh, that dates back from when all books were scrolls. Of course, anyone who likes to read the Bible, you know, those were all scrolls at one time. So books over a period of time have taken unusual shapes. The whole purpose of doing an artist book, it's a way of communicating in an unusual way and a specific point of view to someone who never would have get this information otherwise. That's what book artists are trying to do. They're trying to create an object that, that uh, someone discovers, comes across and says, this is so interesting. I'm going to put this, I'm going to read it. I want to pick it up and look at it and see what it has to tell me. I was really stuck, I was low, the world is doing strange things going on in the world, a lot of sadness, and I was low. And I found that I took this fabric and I just started stitching, and it was, brought me great joy. It was, there were no controls on me, it was something I could just do freely, it um, made me be relaxed, it made me forget about that, those troubles of the world, and I call it language of distraction. So to me, looking at it, it could almost look like a language from an ancient civilization or something like that by the shapes on it. It's a scroll that's been, it was fabric, it was painted, then it was embroidered on, then it has an edging of wire, and it can be all rolled up, or it could be manipulated into a sculptural form. I did this scroll um, that's about the experience of um, the shootings at Virginia Tech in 2007, which is, we were there when, when that happened. I was actually a, a therapist in town and I used a lot of art um, therapeutic techniques in my work and I worked with a lot of the with survivors and with families and s staff at the university using some of these techniques and eventually it kind of got to me and so I, s I sat down and said okay I need to start doing this myself and so I was drawing mandalas on a regular basis. Um, they're usually intuitively done and they're very meditative and um, they're done without any sort of preconceived notion of what should appear on the paper. Um, I usually sit down with a piece of, let's say 12 by 18 paper with a lightly drawn circle and take some oil pastels and then just see what happens. So there's there's, there's no wrong way to do it. Whatever shows up is what needs to show up. So I've 
went back and collected some of the work that I had done, um, both prior to the shooting and then right immediately after, and then almost a year later, and I could sh see the the very profound change in the drawings that I was making immediately after the shootings. And I decided I wanted to capture that in a scroll book. Certainly the, the colors that I was using and the, um, the shapes, the images were very dramatically different. I, w I had a lot of black and dark blue. Um, and in one of them, I think the last one that's in the book, I have all these red, uh, the shape of a torso, and um, I have all these red and black X's because this was roughly a month after the shootings, I think, my back just seized up. And that mandala was actually reflecting the physical state of my uh, back. What I'd really like to see is gun control. I'd just like people to think about that. You know, should our children be the ones who are bearing the brunt of, uh, and I'm gonna start crying, um, of, you know, our inability to, um, to deal with um, something that shouldn't be happening. But uh, uh, so it is kind of there is kind of a political thing. It's kind of an emotional thing. You live through it too. I wish it weren't political. It, it's a human thing. It, it's it's about life.